This is Mrs. O'Neill for Chapter 3, Section 2, Part 2 on Density. You're going to be able to calculate density and understand why density varies with temperature. Have you ever wondered why some objects float in water while others sink? If you think that these lily pads, these like green leaves, float because they are lightweight, you are only partially correct. The ratio of the mass of an object to its volume can be used to determine whether an object floats or sinks in water. For pure water at 4 degrees Celsius, this ratio is 1 gram per cubic centimeters. You know I like to use milliliters. So, in other words, uh, the ratio, uh, density is a ratio between mass and volume of that object. And this is going to be good to know later on that density of water is 1. It's going to be real handy uh, to know for later on. So if an object has a mass to volume ratio less than that 1, then it will float in that water. If an object has a mass to volume ratio greater than this value, it will sink. So in other words, density is all about where it uh, the comparison between the two and if it will float or sink just like this density tower I thought this was pretty neat so your most dense item is going to be at the very very bottom and your least dense item is going to be at the very very top so we have the least dense that floats on top of the most dense and I just thought that this was neat if you want to pause and look at the different components all these little things that are also inside those liquid layers so pause the video, uh, fill in the blanks, and then play to hear my words. And remember, read as you write. Don't just write in the words, but read that statement. So density is the amount of mass that occupies that amount of volume. So again, it's that ratio between mass and volume. So some possible units would be grams per milliliter. Again, that's the one that we're going to use quite often. So grams per milliliter or grams per cubic centimeters, you will see. Uh, but there's other possible units uh, like kilograms per liter. So any mass unit, any, any, any mass unit per or over any, any, any volume unit. And I want to remind you as well that if we have a density of let's say 2 grams per milliliter, it's really 2 grams per 1 milliliter. So you're going to see later on that we're going to use density as a conversion. Density is an intensive property that you learned in chapter two. It's intensive because it doesn't matter if we have one drop of water or we have a pool full of water. If it is pure H2O, that drop of water would be one gram per milliliter for density. And if we have a pool full of water, it would be one gram per milliliter. Uh, and again, it's because of that ratio. Um, and as temperature increases, density actually decreases. And we'll talk about that as well. So here's our density formula. Again, density is mass per volume and what D, M, and V are equal to. So why? Let's talk a little bit about why as temperature increases, density decreases. Well, this is a nice chart. Again, we're always looking at our graphs. And as we look at the graph, we actually have the downward slope. We have a negative slope instead of our normal. Uh, usually our lines go from, you know, our origin of zero, zero and go straight up like a positive slope. But this is actually a negative slope. And what happens is as we increase our temperature of uh, substances, those atoms are molecules molecules are really spreading apart and as they spread apart there's more space in between and so that means they're going to be less dense. So in your notes, you have this to write down as well as drawing um, somehow. Again, I always like you to draw things because I can't show you copper atoms really, really packed together. I can't show you these water molecules and how they're kind of spread out. And I can't show you helium atoms that are all over the place. So if we look at the same, I try to do it anyways this way, the same volume, right, the same square amount, um, look at how many atoms fit into to this volume. Look how many uh, molecules of water and look how many atoms of helium. So copper would be the most dense, water would be somewhere in the middle, and then helium would be the least dense. So somehow or another draw those picture representations. Again, chemistry is all about the models. But what happens with water? Why then does a solid ice float on liquid water? Huh? Well, if we look at the molecules, again, everything is based off of the 
um, uh, based off of, of how the molecules look on the inside. Liquid, I think I spelled liquid wrong, by the way, so you don't have to remind me in class. Uh, I think I caught that, but I'm not restarting this video. Uh, so anyways, if we look at cold water, about 40 degrees, we look at a little bit warmer water, and then we look at ice, look at what's happening as we're, hmm, very interesting. So ice has the most spread molecules, warm water kind of is in between, and now cold water uh, looks like those molecules are kind of close together. So when we go from warm water to cold water, it, those, those water molecules do get uh, closer together, but once it forms that ice, very interesting, right? Very interesting. When it's, it forms that, uh, that ice, it actually, those molecules are spread out. So the molecules in that solid ice, H2O, are more spread out than the molecules in the liquid water, H2O. So uh, if you don't know already, if you ever put a water bottle uh, that's, that's all the way to the tippy tippy top uh, in your freezer, water expands, expands when it, when it freezes, uh, and that's why sometimes it busts out at the seams. Uh, so we have to be very careful with what kind of solutions, anything that's water-based, anything in the freezer, because it would expand and explode. So again, just take a, a moment to look this over. This is quite interesting because H2O is, is its own unique kind of substance. So if we look here again, I try to give you the same area or the same volume of these two forests. We have a whole bunch of trees here and a couple of trees here. And again, I thought these trees look pretty cool. I have no idea where that is. Anyways, uh, so we have two forests, A and B. Which forest would be more dense? Hopefully it makes sense that A is much, much denser because it has more trees per that area, more stuff uh, in that volume area. So let's look at this density formula again. This is pretty cool. This is a math trick um, where we kind of make a pie. We put M on the top, a line, and that line really represents division. And then we put D and V, and the line in between here represents multiplication. So what happens is as we cover up one of the variables, we're going to do the math of the other guy. So let's first cover up density, right? So let's cover up density because that's the original law. Uh, um, uh, equation. So if we cover up density, density equals mass divided by volume. Ha ha! Very interesting and that's what the um, equation is. How about if we cover up mass? Well mass would be density times volume and if we cover up volume it's going to be mass divided by density. So for those of you who are mathematicians and you can easily rearrange a conversion or a, a formula then no big deal. But for those of you who might have have a little bit of, of, of trouble manipulating an algebra problem, right, or an algebra equation, you might want to remember this trick. I'm also going to show you uh, the dimensional, dimensional analysis way. We can use density to convert from a gram, I think I have notes, oops, sorry, uh, oops, sorry, the units. Let's talk about the units real quick. You should know that mass is grams, density is, is a mass unit per volume unit, and of course, volume is a a volume unit milliliters. Um, so this is what I was getting at before, that density you could actually use also as a conversion factor. So a lot of times we're going to take or use density to convert from mass to volume of something or volume to mass of something. And I'll show you that in a moment, how we're going to use that. So pause, read this over, and see if you can come up with an answer, uh, which substance, lithium, water, or lead, would answer this um, information. Hopefully that makes sense to you. And I just thought this was neat that corn oil is actually less dense than corn syrup, and that's why the corn oil is floating on top of that corn syrup. Here are other examples of density and how it's intensive. Again, if we think about gold, so the gold ring that you have on your finger has a density of 19.3, and the gold bars that you see sometimes in movies is also going to have a density of 19.3. So I thought this was pretty neat to see the different densities of your, uh, most of these are elements or compounds. Oh, there's air, that's a mixture. Uh, but see how dense your metals are versus how non-dense uh, again, there's that ice uh, and gasoline. So I thought this was just a neat chart to look over. 
So let's look at some of these example problems. Density of gold is 19.3 grams per cubic centimeters, or I like to say milliliters. What is the mass of 0.18 cubic centimeter gold ring? Okay, so they give us density and they give us mass. I'm sorry, they're giving us volume. Sorry, right, looking at the units, they're giving us volume. So we want to find out the mass. So let's do the trick way first, okay? So the trick way would be, well, if I cover up mass, uh, I'm going to use that pi and it's going to be density times volume. So now I'm going to just plug and chug, pause at this point, make sure you have a calculator out, uh, and then do the math and make sure you get the answer of that. Uh, 3.47, don't forget the grams as the unit. Uh, and I'm going to say at this point, don't worry too much about sig figs. Um, just go to two decimal places and you should be fine. So now let's look at the dimensional analysis way. So again, we're going to use density as a conversion factor. So we're going to start with the volume, what they give us, we're going to use density as the conversion factor so it can be the grams over one cubic centimeters because the cubic centimeters is going to have to cancel out and then again we're going to do the math the multiplication and the answer is the same so now pause the video see if you can come up with these answers again do it either the mathematical trick pi way or you can do it the dimensional analysis way i'm actually going to show you the answers for both Hopefully at this point you paused and you have some work down as well as your answers and don't forget your answers need a unit. So let's look at number one. Again, here's the trick way. If I'm covering up the M, I get density times volume. I'm going to plug and chug my numbers and I'm going to get that as an answer. However, if I'm doing it the dimensional analysis way, I'm going to start with my volume. That's what's given to me and I'm going to use density as a conversion and in this case I can still do the grams over milliliters because the milliliters wants to cancel out and we're end up with grams again same number and two decimal places is fine number two again the trick way now if we cover up volume on our little pi it's really mass divided by density so again i'm going to take my mass divided by density take my two numbers divide them out and you should get that for your answer the dimensional analysis way now i'm going to start with my 1.6 grams again over one just to make sure we're understanding that that's the top number and it's over one now i'm going to use density as a conversion again but now i'm going to flip it my grams number has to be on the bottom and remember before I told you 1.33 grams per one milliliter even though it just says per milliliter we know that that's per one milliliter so in this case the grams has to go on the bottom to cancel out I do the mathematics and I get the same answer as I did with my trick way again number and unit and number three hopefully at this point you're kind of grasping it and if not you might want to even pause and go back and maybe relook or re-watch some of the video uh, so you can get a better understanding so here's our uh, again trick way if I'm looking for volume it's going to be mass divided by density I'm going to plug and chug and put in those numbers and get an answer of 27.35 milliliters again if I want to use the dimensional analysis way I'm going to start with my mass be careful of the way you use your density as a conversion the grams in this case again are going to go on the bottom grams is going to cancel out and I do the mathematics of division and I get the same answer. So hopefully those make sense and we'll do a couple more uh, problems in the book in class. So let's see again there's also a quickie quiz here do you really understand it? So again pause read see if you can do the mathematics and come up with an A B C D answer. Hopefully that's what you got. Number two hopefully that's what you got. Number three Hopefully that makes sense with the information that we went over in this video. And we will see you in class again to do the bookwork. At this point, again, if you have questions, please ask me or one of your classmates.